Hey guys, this is Sorvestian coming to you with my second video in my series on how I play premium ships. In this video, I'm going to be looking at the Atago. Now, the Atago was the second premium ship that I ever bought, and I found her to be a really great investment. She is a great ship for grinding XP and credits, and I can tell you from experience that you're going to get the most bang for your buck with this ship. She is incredibly well balanced and has great survivability and is just overall a really fun ship to play. And you see a lot of them in the game. The Atago is popular. She's the only heavy cruiser that's available in the, in the premium shop. And she's the best ship in the premium shop that's always available. You know, unlike ships like the Tirpitz or the Bliska Vika that are only on sale for a limited time. Now, because she's so popular, that means I've also seen some of the biggest derps in the Otago. You know, mostly by new players who are just jumping into tier 8 games for the first time. They don't know what they're doing. They don't really know what the role of the ship is and how to leverage her strengths. So, in this video, I'm going to kind of break down some of her stats. I'm going to talk about her strengths. And I'm going to talk about how I have my Otago set up, and then I'll keep talking more about the ship as we look at some replays. So the first thing I want to go over is her survivability. Now, the Otago has really great survivability, and it doesn't necessarily just come from her stats, but her stats are pretty good. You know, she has 40,100 hit points. That's almost as many hit points as the Tier 10 Zhao, which has 40,800. Armor-wise, she's, she's pretty average. She's nothing really special to write home about. Now, her, she does have a bit of a big citadel area. You know, it starts all the way from her bridge. It goes all the way back to her aft funnel, you know, where this uh, second set of torpedoes are. So, you know, especially if you're not angling the ship, it's very easy to get citadel in the Otago. For guns, she's got 10 203mm guns. They fire 3.8 rounds per minute. They have a horrible uh, rotation rate. Um, on my Otago, it's 26.1 seconds, but you know I've got commander skills. Uh, the maximum dispersion is 132 meters at almost 16 kilometers. Um, her HE shell damage is 3,300. She has a 17% fire chance. Her AP shells do 4,700. She has a maximum firing distance of 15.8 kilometers. So overall, her guns are pretty good. They don't turn very fast, but the Otago is not a close-in brawler. You know, she's more of a standoffish kind of, you know, uh, kind of attack ship. So her her guns don't need to turn super fast like the American cruisers. Her secondary armament sucks. She really doesn't have very much in the way of secondary armament. Um, and her secondary, secondary armament is also part of her AA defense. She also gets, um, she also gets uh, these small 25mm uh, guns. Um, and she has 28 of them, but her AA defense is really not that great. Um, as with most Japanese cruisers, you know, they just don't specialize in AA defense. What she does have, though, is really great torpedoes. Um, she has four launchers, two on each side. Uh, they each fire four torpedoes each. Her torpedoes do just over 17,000 damage. Uh, they f travel 62 knots, and they travel for 10 kilometers. So, pretty, pretty good. And... You know, another advantage of the Otago is the placement of her torpedo launchers. They're placed in the center of the ship, kind of like uh, German cruisers. Whereas a lot of other Japanese cruisers have the torpedo launchers uh, placed more towards the stern of the ship, um, behind the citadel. And with a lot of the other Japanese cruisers, the launchers are backwards facing. So... Other Japanese cruisers can only fire their torpedoes directly perpendicular to the ship or, or in an arc towards the back of the ship. So to fire them forwards, other Japanese cruisers have to turn the ship and expose their broadside. Whereas the Otago doesn't have to do that. The Otago has, um, you know, it's two forward launchers facing forwards. So she can stay angled while 
and still fire her torpedoes. Conversely, you know, she can still stay angled and fire her torpedoes um, backwards as well. So that's one of another great advantage that the Atago has over tier 8 cruisers. Now she has a great maximum speed. 35.5 knots is approaching destroyer speed. She doesn't have a great turning circle radius. She is a long ship, but she has a really great rudder shift time. Um, you know, I've got upgrades on the Otago. The only tier eight cruiser that has a better rudder shift time would be the New Orleans. And with upgrades, I think that you can get that down to about 5.5 seconds. But her rudder shift time is certainly way better than the Admiral Hipper and even better than the Mogami. Um, her surface detectability is slightly better than other cruisers of her tier. Um, you know, it's 10.7 kilometers here, but I have upgrades um, on this ship. But, you know, her slightly better stealth rating is going to give her a little bit more protection from battleships, which are the biggest threat to the Otago on the battlefield. And it is going to allow you to get in just a little bit closer before you get detected. It is going to allow you to disengage a little bit easier than um, other cruisers. And, you know, that really does help, you know, if you get into a bad situation. So let's go to modules and let's talk about our consumables. Because her consumables is where the Otago is really special. Other tier 8 cruisers do not get the repair party consumable. And now the repair party consumable on the Otago makes a huge difference. I mentioned before she has uh, just over 40,000 hit points. Well, her repair party consumable restores 200 hit, uh, hit points per second for 28 seconds. You do the math, that's 5,600 hit points. Now here I have the uh, commander skill superintendent and I've upgraded it to the repair party too. So I get four charges of of this consumable. So four times uh, uh, 5,600 means that I can repair on, uh, more than half the ship's uh, total uh, health, which is huge. I mean, it effectively means that if I can survive long enough, that I have an effective, I have 60,000 effective hit points, which is just like a huge advantage over other tier eight cruisers. Uh, let's take a look at upgrades. I'm using main battery modification one uh, for obvious reasons. I'm using uh, gunfire control system modification one uh, to increase the accuracy of her guns. Um, I'm using damage control system modification one to increase her survivability. I'm using steering gears modification two also to increase her, her survivability. When it comes to cruisers, uh, speed and maneuverability are very important for avoiding shells from battleships as well as for dodging torpedoes. And I'm using uh, concealment system modification one again, you know, to reduce her detectability. I think that's more advantageous because, like I said before, the main threat to the Otago is not destroyers but battleships. And so um, if you're not being spotted by a destroyer, then concealment is really going to help you, uh, you know, get within firing range of a battleship before they can start firing at you. For commander skills, I'm using expert loader. Uh, this is a really critical skill for this ship because uh, you're, you're going to be switching between HE and AP shells quite a bit. You're going to be using HE for carriers, battleships, and destroyers, whereas you're going to be using uh, AP rounds for cruisers. The reason for that is that you don't have enough penetration to use AP for battleships. And with carriers and destroyers, you're going to over-penetrate because you have 203 millimeter guns. But with cruisers, they have just enough armor that you're gonna penetrate and do the full amount of damage and not over penetrate so you're gonna be doing a lot of switching between HE and AP shells uh, when you're in battle so having the expert loader which reduces the reload time when your guns are fully loaded that's really going to help a lot now I have basic firing training but I'm gonna get rid of that uh, once I get one more point I'm going to take those three points and I'm gonna put them into high alert uh, the 
to get my damage control party consumable to reload just that little bit faster really makes a huge difference uh, putting out fires and floods and getting uh, different modules on the ship back online I cannot stress enough how important situational awareness is knowing when uh, you're being spotted by a destroyer or uh, when you when uh, they might be firing torpedoes at you or when a battleship uh, might have you spotted you know and you might and you can expect incoming uh, shells from them you know this really really important skill to have cannot stress this enough it is probably the most critical skill uh, to your survivability expert marksman definitely want to have this skill because it's going to help your guns turn just that little bit quicker and in the otago while you're not you shouldn't be getting in really close you know there are lots of times when you're going to be switching sides and so uh you you know having your guns turn just that little bit faster is really going to help now i already said uh uh to get high alert but i also have superintendent uh, again because that's going to give me one extra charge for my repair party consumable i go with last stand because I find that the Otago steering and engines tend to get incapacitated rather frequently. Why, I don't know, but it happens a lot. Probably because, you know, this ship uh, goes up against battleships quite frequently and other heavy cruisers. So, you know, this just allows you to keep moving, to keep maneuvering, you know, to keep dodging incoming fire. Whereas if you don't have this and you do get stuck then you're a really easy target in the Otago. I wouldn't go for advanced firing training you know the Otago doesn't have great AA and her secondary guns suck this is more of a skill for uh, ships whose primary guns are less than 155 millimeters or American cruisers that really do have a uh, great AA and that's something that you want to focus on uh, demolition expert, I wouldn't go for that either. You know, the Otago already has a 17% chance and adding 3% isn't really going to help very much. It would help a lot more for ships like the Atlanta, where it only has a, a 5% uh, fire chance, but it has a very uh, high rate of fire. And so adding 3% onto that would, would make it 8%, and that really would help that ship uh, set a lot of fires. Whereas in the Otago, it's really not going to help that much. For the level 5 skills, Concealment Expert might be uh, might help, but I think uh, Jack of All Trades is what you really want to get as your level 5 skill because of the minus 10 uh, to the reload time of all mounted consumables. You know, that's just going to help your uh, damage control party and your repair party consumable, you know, re recharge that much faster. And, you know, that's really going to help you uh, survive better on the battlefield. And lastly, uh, the Otago being a premium ship gets her own unique set of camouflage. She gets the Type 8. Um, you know, it reduces the firing accuracy enemies have. The reduces the chance of the shells hitting uh, the Otago and she gets a boost to her XP. I think you'd probably want to stick with this camouflage. Um, the Type 1 has the minus 3 detectability which is great but the Type 1 and the Type 2 which is basically the same as the Type 8 don't get uh, that bonus to experience so you know one you might as well keep that bonus since you've paid the money to have a premium ship. So anyways, uh, I'm going to keep talking about the Otago and, and how you should play the Otago as we uh, get into some replays. So this is the first replay, and you can see right off the bat, I am moving up to support um, my friendly destroyers. That is one of the things that the Otago is really good at. She has that 16 kilometer range, so she can move up and sit behind her destroyers let her friendly destroyer spot for her and lay down cover fire. You know, that's going to be really important uh, in helping your team because eliminating enemy destroyers uh, is really going to give your team an advantage. It's going to protect your battleships. It's going to put the enemy team in the dark. They're not going to have uh, someone spotting for them, so it's going to be a lot harder for them to target. 
And you know, obviously, uh, you want to help your destroyers uh, cap zones. So you you want to move up and support them. So here you can see I've just been detected, um, probably by that uh, Bliskavika. But I can't see the Bliskavika anymore. I have AP loaded. So what I do is I just dump my AP onto the North Carolina there, and I start turning. You don't want to sail in a straight line. Now you can see there the accuracy of the Otago's uh, guns. I landed seven shots on on that North Carolina, and she's almost at my maximum range. Here I put down, uh, I fire a salvo of HE, and then I immediately start turning again. And you can see that com that coming in is a salvo from that North Carolina. Now if I had stayed a broadside and just kept sailing in a straight line, he probably would have citadeled me, and I would have lost just a huge chunk of my health. Now you can see like it, at this range and with no DD spotting for that battleship, uh, the only time I get detected is when I actually fire my guns. And you can see that I just fired one gun to kind of get an idea of what kind of lead I should put down before I fired um, before I fired my other guns. And you know it takes about 13 seconds to reload the guns in the Otago, so that's something that you really wanna that you really want to do before you fire all your guns because if you miss well you've just wasted 13 seconds so now you can see um, that basically the whole enemy team's over here so I'm I'm pulling out um, that's not a situation you don't want to just keep sailing into the enemy team and Leroy Jenkins at trying to do as much damage as you can so here, you know, the Otago has a really great speed, you know, and sh um, she has a great rudder shift time. So, you know, I'm able to turn the ship relatively quickly and um, just bug out. So what I'm actually going to do right now is I'm going to just skip ahead. So coming around the island, you can see I get, an, um, I get a Miyoko in my sights and I take a shot. The arc on the shells fired from the Otago's guns is not that high, so you don't have to give as much lead time. It's really, really nice. It makes it a lot easier to hit enemy ships with the Otago's guns. Now, this is why you fire AP shells at enemy cruisers. Three Citadel hits over 17,000 damage. Now, if you remember, the Otago sh AP shells only do 4,700 damage each. But with the accuracy of the Otago's guns and the number of shells you're firing, situations like that where you land multiple citadels is actually fairly common and that's where the, the DPM of this ship comes from. Now you can see there's an Amagi firing at me, and I didn't stay broadside, I didn't sail in a straight line, and that was really important, because he would have citadeled me. Now I just dumped my uh, the AP shells that I had loaded, and I'm loading HE, because I know that against the Amagi, I don't have the penetration power uh, to use AP. It's not going to be effective, so I'm switching to HE. And I'm hoping that I can try and set some fires as well as do a, you know, a decent amount of damage. Now, I'm not broad, going broadside to, to that Amagi, but he just fired a salvo off at another ship, so I know he's got a 30 second reload. So now I'm swinging my ship around to try and fire my rear guns. To, you know, to try and set some more fires on this Amagi and to try and get and to try and soften them up. You can see there I did over 4,000 damage with my HE shells. So, you know, just like the AP shells, even though each individual shell isn't doing that much damage, you know, when you're landing seven or ten shells a shot, you know, it, it, it adds up pretty quick. In this next replay, you're going to see the advantage the Otago has over other Japanese cruisers with its torpedo configuration, and in this case, the advantage it has over the other Tier 8 Japanese cruiser, the Mogami. The Mogami's torpedoes are located in the aft part of the ship, so coming out from behind that island, he can't fire his torpedoes right away because he has to wait for the aft part of his ship to clear the island first, and he has to turn his ship away from me in order to fire his torpedoes forward. 
If he had been in an Otago, he would have been able to fire off a set of torpedoes immediately after coming out from behind that island, and he would have gotten me because at that range, I wouldn't have been able to dodge them. But thankfully he wasn't, and I had the advantage of being ahead of him, but even if he had come out from behind the island before me, I still would have been able to get off a set of torpedoes before I died, and still bag myself a kill. So in this last replay, you're going to see why I kept saying battleships are an, uh, the Otago's worst enemy. Now, do you see uh, legendary Gary there? Yeah, you want to keep an eye on him. So here I am um, turning to try and get out of here because there's two Iowas uh, and a couple cruisers. And right now I'm broadside and boom. So what he did there was he penetrated me because you know he's firing 406 millimeter shells and of course battleships always fire uh, uh, AP shells and so you know he penetrated my armor unfortunately he hit my magazine and boom you know I was just instantly dead but still that was a really lucky shot so I guess legendary Gary really is legendary <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I hope it helps you enjoy the Otago more. Uh, please click like if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos about World of Warships. This has been Sorvistion. Take care.